Imagine that a Linux distribution had reached its end of life due to an application or an environment, actually, I should say, coming along, being a more modern, updated, and the major distribution decided to go ahead and use that one and kill the other project that it started. Well, that happened about 10 years ago, and we're going to take a look at that distribution whose end of life came, but yet somehow, like a phoenix, has risen from the ashes. Ubuntu Unity desktop environment once again has become a thing. Like a phoenix, it came out of the ashes, rejuvenated, reinvigorated, remodernized, but yet still Unity. And it was all done by what I believe is now, I think he did it when he was seven or eight years old. Now he's like 11 or 12, but it was a child. A child did this. He liked Unity so much that he didn't want the project to die that he completely redid it himself. But that's not the only one he did. He did other distributions as well. Uh, so you can read about him on the internet because he's an amazing child. He's definitely a savant. But nonetheless, he has re-risen Unity, Ubuntu Unity, and that's what we're going to take a look. And here it is. Ubuntu Unity, more modernized. I can't remember. I guess I think it came already in the dark theme, which is badass in my book. There's very few distributions that come in the dark theme, but this one did. Before it used to come in a bright theme with the orange and all that Ubuntu ness that I don't like. Uh, I mean, I like Ubuntu. I love Linux. I'm always going to support it, but it was just not my preferred distribution. And because that god awful orange, I'm sorry. I'm not an orange guy. Sorry, guys. That awful orange was horrid. Freaking horrid. But either way, it is, and I hear they're getting away from it now themselves after, what, like 50 freaking years? But they're getting away from it. But anyhow, let's get back to the Unity. So as with the typical Unity desktop, you had your top bar, your top panel, and then you had the Unity bar on the side. Okay. Now, what is so cool is that with it right here is where you would find your applications. You know, like if you wanted um, video, you typed in video and it comes up with all your video stuff right there, man. Isn't that totally cool? If you go here, this is where all your software is at. This is what you can see. You click here on what's installed and this is where all your stuff is installed. This is what GNOME came, sort of came for. Although GNOME was around, this was kind of a, a derivative, I should say it was a fork of GNOME. It, 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 the look and feel of it, really, was a fork of GNOME because GNOME started off way early, them and KDE. GNOME's one of the first desktop environments ever. So, but anyhow, it's kind of it's kind of like, kind of like that. So it's not anything that's hard for you to use. Plus it had the plugins that you could do, like your, your Dash plugins. Then over on your left hand side, you had your actual tray icons of what was actually launched along with your volume indicator, you know, like your internet connection, right? Or your actually, sorry, your language. You can set your keyboard layout here and everything. Uh, this is your internet connection next to it, which will tell you which one it is. Or, you know, if you have wireless, you can do your connections, your wire connections there. And then I believe this was the um, theme switcher. So you can actually switch theme if you open that up. And there, well, oh yeah, I think you have to install themes and I don't have themes. So we can switch theme again, go back to dark. This is where you go from light to dark. Uh, you can do your accent colors, which could be blue, magenta, olive. This is cool. This is something that's modernized that they did before you couldn't do that. Um, but you could actually like do bark, which I believe that's that. Is that that god awful orange? Oh, let's go to... Okay, let's open up file manager. Files? No, hmm, interesting. I'm not sure what color that is. That is probably like an accent, you know, accent color for maybe your selector, um, blue. Is that it? No, I don't know. 
uh, red, olive, Persian, green, whatever. Uh, oh, what else was there? You could enable disable auto hide launcher and more parent settings. We'll click that to see what else. And this opens up your standard settings where you can configure your desktop, put in your wallpapers. Look at these wallpapers that they've got. That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Uh, let's do this one. This one's kind of cool looking, the forest one. Wow, I like that one. We're going to keep that one. But they got a ton of wallpapers. It's got a ton of wallpapers put into this. That is so cool. Is this like a Phoenix one right here? Nope, that's a ram head. Buckhead. Let's go back to the Yaru thing, the, this one. I like this one. Yeah, this one's cool. It yeah, will keep that one. Um, then you got the Yaru Dark behaviors for Windows. Um, you have that uh, for you got your trash can icon on the panel over here, which will give you your file manager. But you can also get to the trash can as well. Uh, it is it is the typical standard Unity desktop. So go here to software. Uh, let's see what he's got for he's got additional drivers, advanced network configuration, all right, appearance, archiver, Bluetooth, Atrial document viewer. Uh, he's got uh, brightness lock, uh, character map, cheese for your webcam and your camera to take pictures, uh, details. I wonder what details is. This is going to be your about, apparently. So it's the Unity 7.6 desktop um, default applications. Here you can set, you know, like your web browser, your favorite and all that, the, 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 the default one, what to do with removable media and any legal notices that are here. So and we'll go back to here to the applications. Um, appearance, here's the, where, like I said, where you can get to your settings for, um, you can increase your, your icons, set the, the, the Yaru theme for the color, whatever it is, you know, you can do all that there. So there's that. Um, it's got GNOME disks installed. It's got for displays. It's where you can adjust your display settings. Uh, Doc scanner has got installed. Um, Eye of Mate image viewer. Uh, it's got your files, your GNOME files, GDEB package installer, Firefox web browser, which let's see what version of that that is. Um, it definitely opens stuff a little on the slower end, but it could be because it's first run as well, you know, because it's wanting me to do this setup, which I'm not going to do any of that stuff. I just want to see what version we're on, see if it's a recent one. And it is 1.100.8, which is a more recent, more modern version of Firefox. So there is, it is definitely modernized by the look and the feel of it, but it's still got enough of the unity look and feel that it feels familiar although it did take me a minute to to remember where how to get to all the software it's in these tabs down below like uh your software tab then this is i believe your document tab right or your file sorry yeah your file manager tab this is your video tabs like if you have any videos that are on your system this is your music if you had any music on your system and this is your pictures in case you had any pictures on your system so you can search for photos music or videos through there and this is of course the shortcut to your file manager and I, so we'll go back there. So anyhow, it's got disks, Firefox, GDEB package manager, because you know, it's Ubuntu. Um, you got keyboard office. It's got LibreOffice installed as a default office viewer. Um, for logging out, you got this right here. It's got the Mate calculator. It's got Minds the game on there. You can use your mouse and touchpad adjustment sensors. OBS Studio came installed. I didn't install OBS. Did I install OBS? I don't remember installing OBS, so that may be one that is installed. Um, it's got Shotwell. It's got Stacer. I mean, it's got Stacer's a great app. Uh, it's very similar to CC Cleaner in Windows. In fact, that would be the alternative to it in Linux, I believe. Um, it's got your system monitor, which go ahead and take a look at it and see how we're sitting on resources. So for resources, we're looking at. Oh, it's. For memory, it's using 1.2 gigs. At rest, even though I've opened a couple of apps, but not very many. Um, and it's using a pretty good bit of my, my processors evenly across 
all the cores are running about anywhere from 20 to 13 percent so i mean it's it's seemingly using some resources which unity did use a lot of resources back in the days um system monitor it's got rhythm box for your player your system settings we'll take a look here's probably your standard display settings like it was back then yep this is where you can reach all those things you know like online accounts all that good stuff i think actually if i remember correctly the unity desktop is the one to introduce the actual amazon app that's what it's missing it's missing the amazon app but nonetheless it that's another clue that it's definitely more modernized because nobody wants that garbage on their crap so on their stuff uh so anyhow there's that it's got your software update your software updater um the synaptic package manager for your software startup applications where you can start up stuff uh it's got probably your sharing for like samba and dnla uh terminal is going to be the probably the gnome terminal maybe uh, yeah i think it is but anyhow so it's got that that's the only pain in the ass so you got to click on that you got to keep going into that software to find stuff it's not categorized um it's got the unity tweak tool there we go just like gnome tweaks only they call it the unity tweak tool so you got launcher your search your panel all this stuff switcher to switch layouts that's cool so it's got that installed so you have your tweak tools installed it's called Unity Tweak Tools. Um, you've got UX term um, and X term terminals and VLC media player as well installed. So uh, anyhow, that's a look at the Unity desktop. Let's um, let's go ahead and you know just simply call it call it what it is, man. It is a very nice redistribution look of Ubuntu Unity that is now an actual official flavor of ubuntu they they have recognized this this guy's work this kid's i, I want to say kid but he's obviously way more advanced than just being a kid but nonetheless they, they they looked at this kid's work and they said you know what man we really need to make it a flavor again so they've actually made it the unity flavor and that's what i downloaded this came from the official ubuntu website it is a little bit resource intensive but you know it's got a lot of stuff going in it, so of course it's going to be. Uh, it is beautiful. It is well done. Bravo to the to the child that did this and to his group because he's put together to meet a team that actually maintain it and developed it. So um, bravo to those guys. Uh, job well done, guys. Tell me what you think. Download it. Give it a spin. You 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 uh, Ubuntu lovers, give it a try. Check it out. Tell me what you think. It's kind of like going back in the way way back machine but not so way, way back. So, I mean, it's cool. It's really cool. Either way, hey, you guys keep on doing what you do. Keep on Linuxing. Uh, leave a comment down below how you think uh, about this distribution or if you've used it or if you know I left something out. And then please, by all means, y'all keep on Linuxing and stay blessed, all right? Have a great day.